Welcome back, my dear children, for this catechesis entitled The Antichrist, Prophecies and Interpretation. We have spoken so many times about this theme that if the modernists allow us, is not at all a foreign topic. On the contrary, it is a completely biblical and theological theme and is part of the patrimony of biblical revelation. So we do not invent anything when we talk about the Antichrist, and it is necessary, indeed I would say urgent, that we inform ourselves about this matter here because it is an especially critical issue, issue to be explored. <clears throat> I refer you for the prolegomena, as they say, to my meetings of reflection, to my catechesis that you can find on the Radio Domina Nostra YouTube channel that allow you to deepen your understanding. Just click on Dominutella, then put Antichrist. Not because Dominutella is the Antichrist, but because it is the theme to look for. And you will find further insights on the YouTube channel. However, it is especially important this evening to deepen a theme that is completely overlooked, which is the set of prophecies concerning the figure of the Antichrist. So, I will go ahead in order. First, I'll make a broad introduction. Then I will offer my interpretive thesis on the Antichrist. And finally, I will read you a couple of prophecies, commenting on them, over the centuries that concern the advent of the Antichrist. So I repeat in this introduction, in this introductory part, that we do not need to explain to the modernists that the theme of the Antichrist is a theme, so to speak, that is recognized by Revelation, which is present in sacred scripture, particularly in a completely explicit way. The theme of the Antichrist is found in the Catholic letters, and in this case in the letters of John, and then in the Pauline letters. But that is not the theme of this evening and is a subject that I've already addressed at other times. I wonder if uh, this society in which we find ourselves living in, a society in which uh, God has been completely set aside, and much more so Jesus Christ, a society that has built a new religion. We are in the presence of a new humanitarian religion in which man is worshipped and not God. A society in which legislation is no longer made, not only without the law of God, but openly against the law of God. It is a society that is preparing, as the Apocalypse says, for the advent of the Antichrist. That is something we must ask ourselves. A little while ago I gave an interview. It wasn't actually an interview, it was a dialogue with a couple of friends who are theologians and jurists, in which I argued that if the Patriarchate of Moscow, I'm only uh, bringing my own considerations here, if it knew, I don't know if they know, but if the Patriarch knows that in the Latin West there is a ghettoized enclave which resists the application of the LGBT agenda, I have no doubt that this could become, who knows if God will not allow it, the occasion for a profound understanding to be born between the Russian Orthodox and the small or large Catholic resistance. Do you understand me? That a profound understanding can be born between the Russian Orthodox and the small or large Catholic resistance. I don't exclude this because the ways of providence are incalculable. And it will be necessary to make a common front. Moreover, it is said that the great prelate will bring together again the churches of the East and of the West. Here I invite you to pray that the Patriarchate of Moscow, and I say specifically that of Moscow, because the Greek-Turkish Patriarchate is another thing altogether, that of Constantinople and of Athens are another thing altogether. Those are a little more aligned with the modernist and progressive positions of the West. But instead, the Patriarchate of Moscow, if it knew that here in Rome, for example, in, the, in Western Europe, that is, there is a Catholic reality that is not aligned with Bergoglio, the false pope, the implementer of the globalist and secretistic and pro-LGBT agenda. But there is an entity that we, for example, represent that courageously does not bow down to the globalist diktats because we are on the front lines 
because when Russia declares that it does not comply with the diktats of the globalist agenda, it is still in Russia. The traditional Christianity is preserved. Moscow is not at all what we see in the news. But if they knew that there is this resistance, I think, this could be effective. Let us pray for this to happen. Let's go back to the subject of the Antichrist. And so I wanted to tell you first of all of this, we, we have to consider the fact, although maybe difficult to accept, that the, that the Antichrist is not a myth or a demon. The Antichrist is not a demon, mind you, and he's not even uh, just a mere hearsay. Is this understood? The Antichrist is, is not heretical, uh, nor is he primarily a mental construct, as many claim. I've been thinking about this for a long time, too. No, the Antichrist is the man of iniquity, as St. Paul calls him, a man like all the others, that is, he is a human being. The Antichrist, mind you, who will be born from a mysterious copulation, and these are the prophecies, we're already getting to specifics here, it will be a copulation between a woman and Satan. Then, in an extraordinary way, this man will be aided so that he will be able to say and do wondrous things, to deceive the righteous themselves. Many unrighteous ones will also be deceived, of course. For example, we see even today how, in the face of the very clear apostasy of the faith, carried out by the idolatrous Bergoglio, who allows Catholics to prostrate before the Pachamama, cardinals and bishops who seem to be saints, directors of Marian networks who seem to be saints, but in reality they close their eyes and remain silent. This implies that they are seduced in some way. For if you stay silent in the face of this deception, you are an accomplice to the deception itself. Our Lady, for example, at La Salette, said that the Antichrist, from the La Salette apparition, the Antichrist will come, as we will see. I don't know uh, what I'm going to be able to say tonight in just 50 to 55 minutes, so I'll try to summarize. Our Lady at La Salette gave absolutely incredible indications about the Antichrist and she deserves to be known because Our Lady said that he will speak seven times, six times better than her son, therefore he will have extraordinary powers, he will therefore deceive the righteous themselves and will dethrone all the mighty of the earth, becoming for a time the commander, so to speak, the ruler of the world. This will do, as I also wrote in my book on the Apocalypse, here it is, The Symphony of the Lamb. I've, uh, I've deepened for those who have it, for those who are familiar with the book, I've written about this theme when I spoke of the amazing preternatural abilities that the Antichrist will have. I refer you to my book on the Antichrist, which is within the reflection of the Apocalypse. During his nefarious reign, which will last, as the sacred text says, so we have biblical texts that tell us about the Antichrist. His reign will last three and a half years. Oh well, scholars wonder if this is a, a concrete, literal application, or if it is uh, symbolic. In my book on the Apocalypse, I think we should speak of the symbolic time of three and a half, as in half of seven, seven being uh, perfection, it belongs to God alone, and, and Satan, of course, mimics God. So it could only stop in the middle, let's say at three and a half. However, it could also be a specific time of three and a half years. During this ominous time that I uh, say right away, none of us is prepared because of the ecclesial government we have. Because here I would like to tell you, since we're in the days that prepare for the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima, next Friday, May 13th, is the anniversary of the apparition of Fatima. Our Lady gave the three secrets on July 13th, 1917. The third secret speaks, without any doubt, of the Antichrist as well. I have no doubt about that. I have no doubt. Indeed, I believe that when it is finally revealed, we will still be alive. It will turn out that a conspicuously large part of the third secret of Fatima concerns precisely the coming of the Antichrist. However, today's presumptive Catholic hierarchy, or should I say uh, pseudo-Catholic hierarchy, 
wanted to remain completely silent in the face of the advent of the Antichrist. And so we are completely unprepared for what he will do. Here, during the nefarious reign of the Antichrist, of which the scriptures speak, he who I repeat is a human being, he is a man like all of us, but conceived by the work of Satan, because Satan tries to imitate God. Christ was conceived by God in Mary's womb. The Antichrist will be impressive, but he will be conceived by the work of Satan. Not necessarily directly by Satan, because Satan is an angel, is an angel and he does not have uh, the male seed, of course. He takes the seed. And so, <clears throat> there you enter into something mysterious. But now I have a suggestive thesis of my own that I hope will not lead you to, to beat me. I have an idea that I'm, not, that I'm now telling you about how the Antichrist will come. Because if he comes out, let's say from the human race, Scripture must be able to tell us something. And I've glimpsed something, now I will tell you. But in the meantime, let us conclude this first passage. During this reign that is not, uh, is not said to be far away, and that is not excluded that the Antichrist is already in our midst, because we see the, uh, the Antichristic society anyway. It will upset all peoples. It will persecute the true church because we, as the Antichrist exists, he will make his own church. Beware of this decisive passage. That is, there will be a church of the Antichrist that will pass off as the official church. They will pass as the church of all ages because the attempt will be uh, to not make the transition well understood. But in reality, it is no longer the Catholic Church. It is the false church of the Antichrist. Therefore, the anti-church will emerge. Is this understood? The anti-church will therefore persecute the true church, while the Antichrist will give pomp and glory to the false church that he founded and will be, uh, he'll be worshipped, as the Apostle Paul says. The Antichrist will come to be worshipped in the temple of God, in the holy place. Now, this holy place, as many interpreters of the prophecies concerning the Antichrist say, is Rome, without a doubt. That is why Our Lady at La Salette said that Rome will become the seat of the Antichrist. So, we must become increasingly aware that the Antichrist is a human being, endowed by reason of the fact that he is conceived with a satanic type of copulation. He is endowed with extraordinary powers. But I would like to go into this matter of copulation here because it is an embarrassing but important subject. Because if we are saying that the Antichrist is conceived uh, by the copulation of Satan with a woman, we must be able to identify something in Scripture. So, I, um, I repeat now, I offer a thesis uh, that is not far-fetched, because some fathers of the Western Church of the 3rd century, such as Irenaeus, for example, uh, say so. But this interpretation has been completely overlooked. I, pr I propose it to you again. It is the first time that it has been discussed. I've seen here and there, doing extensive research, that no one has talked about it, and so I propose my thesis, my supposition, that asks for respect from you. Well, then in the book of Genesis, in chapter 6, there are some enigmatic verses. I'll read them to you. Of course, I'll read uh, them from the translation. One of the best for me, edited by uh, the Ricciotti for the FEDF publishing house. Let's read what happens. When we read about uh, what God decrees for the flood, men having begun to multiply over the earth and having procreated daughters, the sons of God, who are not men because they are not called men. In the Hebrew text, it is Elohim. So we say things ascribed to the sphere of divinity. Who saw the daughters of men to be beautiful and took wise wives from among all of those whom they pleased. That is, we speak of a copulation, of a carnal bond. And if we do not understand who these children of God are, we think that they are men uh, who take women. Then there's nothing special here. On the other hand, it is an important underlining. 
the Hebrew text of the term, of the Hebrew term Elohim. They are not, uh, as some claim in social media, divinities of the polytheistic pantheon, because God is God, and God is one. We speak here, as some fathers of the church say, of fallen angels. That is, after the expulsion of Lucifer and the rebellious angels from heaven, uh, they were hurled down, as the Apocalypse says, to the earth. The cosmocrateres are called on the negative side. They are demons who are, uh, who are given to govern the air, the water, fire, etc., and who constantly clash with the angels faithful to God. It is a battle we do not see. It is an agony, you know. The Latin text of St. Jerome, translated from Greek, speaks of coluctatio. There is a scuffle. We do not see it, but it is there. So according to the most difficult interpretation, this text would speak of the beginning of a race that comes out of the copulation of these Elohim. These uh, Elohim, these fallen heavenly spirits with women. What does that mean? It's not a direct copulation. Look, I'm not inventing anything. It's a thesis that I'm proposing again, but that was circulating in the past. Then it was completely lost to history. And I believe that if we are to recognize that the Antichrist, as it is true, is a human being, but conceived through copulation with Satan. We must understand what this means. Some fathers of the church say that it is not a matter of direct copulation because the angels do not have the male seed that fertilizes the womb of a woman. But they are malefic cosmocrotores who take possession of certain men to copulate with women. That is how they believe that even if the fruit of copulation is due to the union between a man and a woman, because there's no other way. In fact, they consider themselves, let us say, active pro uh, protagonists of these creatures that are born. It is shocking, I know, but Satan has never done this. Now we know from ancient Christian, even pre-Columbian cultures, that in some circumstances, in animist cultures, it still happens. Tribal dances are made in which first, through narcotics and constant uh, rhythmic dancing, one goes into a trance, and in, uh, in this trance, in which uh, spirits enter the male, there is a collective or single orgy with a woman, who conceives what is then considered uh, a being destined for great works. This is attested. These dances can even be uh, macabre. These satanic dances that then involve, in the end, a copulation between a man and a woman, but of a man who is already possessed by impure spirits. Satan has reserved for himself the best part, that is to provide through a black mass, for example, through a voodoo rite, a macumba, something like that. A macabre dance to reserve for himself the final copulation so that uh, the Antichrist will come out. The text is even more enigmatic because in verse 4 it says, Now there were giants on the earth at that time because after the Elohim, they say they are children of God. But you have understood, they are not human beings. They were joined to the daughters of men, and they gave birth. Out came these strong and robust men who were famous over the centuries. Some fathers of the church, some exegetes, especially in the contemporary, uh, contemporary era, they smile and scoff at this matter. And they, and they prefer to skip this stuff completely. Even Father Dolindo Rotolo prefers not to go into this in depth in his uh, commentary in Genesis. But this text then, as you are hearing, speaks of the possibility that the, the Elohim, that for us with respect to what a certain uh, Biglino says, for example, seems to me to be called what, um, who makes many listening numbers, 
and who believes that we are talking about real divinities. Our Christian faith teaches us and imposes us a, mono, a rigid monotheistic vision though. That is, God is God, God is one, God, are, God is comprised of three persons. There are a few divinities, there is no polytheistic pantheon. So these Elohim, who are surely uh, and certainly are not men, who are they? It is the fallen angelic spirits who make a mockery of God's plan. And by copulating certain rites, as I'm telling you, they have produced a secret race. That is my guess. A secret is subterranean race that has always had the upper hand in the world. So if you were uh, to do certain investigations on the DNA of certain historical figures, you would find that they all come from the same strain. Take the example of Adolf Hitler. How was Hitler conceived? Do we know? Well, let us also see Bergoglio. How did it really go with him? We see other characters in, this, in, in history. That is, the sacred text suggests that there is a lineage, a human race, a human family among human families, that comes from this ancestral copulation of the Elohim, that is, of the fallen angelic spirits with the women of humans. And yet it is said, I've been taught this, that another proof is, uh, is needed. And I'll bring it to you. And you'll be speechless. To tell you that I, uh, I do not want tonight to force you to believe this stuff. But my dear children, we must consider these things. Is there, another, is there any other proof of these hypotheses in sacred scripture? There is, there is. I'm going to show it to you. And right from Genesis, it could only be the apocalypse. The apocalypse to say that this satanic race from which the Antichrist will come. <clears throat> Sorry, I bring you um, a technological reason. Tonight's speech is especially important. Is it true? Isn't it that Matthew and then also Luke emphasizes the importance of Christ's uh, genealogical lineage? Yes, it is true. And even if Matthew brings us back to Abraham and therefore 19, 1900 years before Christ, no less than Luke, as I write in my book, he became flesh. He leads him back to, to Adam himself to say that uh, then there was a noble race, a holy lineage, a royal lineage, a race preselected by God uh, from which Christ came by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will not find this written anywhere. It is a theological gem of yours truly. Now, the Antichrist is the fruit of Satan, who tries to mimic God in everything. So Satan has also created his own genealogy, only it is secret. As Jesus Christ comes from Joseph, Joseph from Mathan, Mathan from so-and-so, all the way back to King David, and then all the way back to Abraham, and then even Luke to Adam, uh, so it is highly likely that there's a genealogy of the Antichrist. <coughs> Those interested in this topic know it. Certain families of Jewish descent who run the world's financial institutions, who have all the royalties in the universe, who can decide much more uh, than Western heads of state, uh, they might suspect this. Certain leaders chosen by these powers to fight the Catholic Church with this typical antichristic matrix could lead one to believe this. But there's a third further element that makes us believe that there may be a carnal offspring of the Antichrist that has remained until now and that will remain hidden, clandestine, semi-occult until the Antichrist himself manifests as it happened for Christ. And that is the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, I always take the text from this version that I recommend, uh, published by FEDF. In Revelation, at a certain point, uh, John speaks of the elect, and he makes a list. Let's see here. For the more experienced, we will be struck by the fact that the apocalypse confirms what we are saying. 
We are in chapter 7, and we are speaking of the lineage of all the elect. At a certain point we read, and he heard, chapter 7 verse 4, the number of those marked, that is marked with the seal of salvation, the fragis, 144,000 marked by all the tribes of the children of Israel. And here begins this specific list. Keep count. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 marked. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 uh, marked. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000 marked. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000 marked. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 marked. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 marked. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 marked. From the tribe of Levi, Levi, 12,000 marked. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 marked. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 marked. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 marked. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 marked. How many are there? Are these? 12, but uh, no one has noticed among the non-experts that incredibly a tribe is missing from the count. And the fathers of the church wondered why this tribe that the tribe of Dan is missing. I asked my collaborators to take my book. Where is it? The fathers of the church wondered why the tribe of Dan is missing. All right. Because if you look at the Old Testament tribes of Israel, you will see that there is a tribe of Dan. Why doesn't the Apostle John or someone on his behalf include the tribe of Dan? Is it an oversight? Or is it done on purpose? The fathers of the church say that it is done on purpose. The tribe of Dan, according to the Apocalypse, is exactly the missing link, the last link in this chain of an underground satanic genealogy. Isn't this stunning? I think so. Dear children, do not be too impressed because, my dear ones, we are in the presence of a reading of history that is a history of salvation that foresees the clash, especially the final one. In my book, The Symphony of the Lamb, I delve into this matter here and I write, The tribe of Dan is missing from the list. This omission of John is already uh, justified in the fathers of the church by the conviction that while Christ came from the tribe of Judah, the Antichrist will come from the tribe of Dan. So this thesis of mine that I am presenting to you tonight, which is a little terrifying, is nevertheless theologically proven. There are already the fathers of the church who say, Christ comes from the tribe of Judah, and there's a genealogy that goes back in Matthew, all the way to Abraham, in Luke, all the way to Adam, the progenitor of humanity. In the same way, there is, without uh, our being openly aware of it, a lineage of the Antichrist that goes all the way back to this moment in history, which is so enigmatic in Genesis chapter 6. Giants are not to be understood simply in terms of physical appearance, also, but of intellectual and spiritual gifts, because being part of a dynasty obtained with the participation of demons, spirits come out. And in fact, some families, some families that today have uh, enormous wealth and that work for the new world order, if I survive this catechesis, it is a miracle. Some families that, uh, that have the global financial institutions in their hands, if you notice, they have a lineage. A lineage that makes them all competent in music, intellectually very gifted, who succeed in everything, to whom all doors are opened. They have in their hands the power of the world. It is the dynasty of the Antichrist, which is where the Antichrist will come from, from a Jewish family. Because, why, because, why from a Jewish family? Because to the very end, Lucifer wants to imitate God. Christ co uh, comes from a Jewish woman and a dynasty from a, Jewish, from a Jewish lineage. Then Lucifer cannot allow the Antichrist to come out of a dynasty that I would call from someone who is Italian or French or Spanish. He must be of Jewish blood. And then, therefore, Dan is not there because he is 
the tribe from which the Antichrist will come. And it is possible that this is the tribe which belongs uh, to this form of copulation with the Elohim, that is, is rightly translated as children of God. But they are not the children of God, understood as human beings. They are the children of God, understood as superhuman realities, but not to be understood as divine entities. They are essentially fallen uh, entities. There's only one God, the God of Jesus Christ. Uh, they are the heavenly spirits, the angels endowed with virtues, let us say with extraordinary qualities, who are rejected from heaven. Uh, they are fallen angels, as Revelation 12 says. The earth, uh, to the earth, as sacred scripture clearly says, Lucifer reserves the task of entering that powerful, rich, famous man who knows he belongs to the satanic lineage, from whom Antichrist will come forth from the copulation with a woman. In Pachamama, carrying a child in her womb, a life, is that horrendous monster that Bergoglio has placed in the Vatican, is, let's say, a precursor to the Antichrist. I would add that uh, Hippolytus of, of Rome, who lived between the 2nd century and the 3rd century AD, so we're right back in time, expressly says, I took it from uh, the writings of Hippolytus of, of Rome, from the tribe of Judah was born the Christ, from the tribe of Dan, the Antichrist will be begotten. Saint Irenaeus of Lyon, also recalls this conviction, and we must be amazed by the fact that St. Augustine, uh, for me it is a litmus test, confirms this fact as well. So it is a human being that is the Antichrist who comes out of this tribe of Dan, who at the beginning of human history had a copulation by a, double, a diabolical possession with the woman of human lineage and a subterranean lineage came out that then naturally, like all human races, spread all, all over the planet. But there are these human beings who carry altered DNA, who are successful in life, they are monsters, they are geniuses, they succeed in everything. They do things easily, they obtain power and above all, they have the banking realm in their hands. Because uh, money, as you know, is the dung of Satan. So they have financial power, they have the world's economic system in their hands. St. Bede, the Venerable, who is one of the last fathers of the Church, writes that John left out Dan, from whom it is said that the Antichrist must be born. So as you can see, I'm asking you for patience tonight, because I don't, I don't think many of you have ever heard these things, but before presenting them to you, I, I prayed on this, I pondered, I meditated on these issues. Keep in mind it is a hypothesis, it's theologically convincing, let us say, but still a hypothesis. I add, what is the reason it was believed that the Antichrist had to come from Dan? Because from the tribe of Dan? Dan is the northern tribe that had defiled itself with idol worship. So here's a reference to the Pachamama. The reference to Pachamama is very important because Dan is considered by the fathers of the church by some fathers of the church, as the tribe from which the Antichrist comes carnally. As it is the tribe that most of all, because the others have also done so, has prostrated itself before idols with the act of final apostasy. That is, while the other tribes have made a sort of henotheistic choice, that is, only one God amongst many, the tribe of Dan had made a choice of apostasy, an outright choice. That is, that there is no Yahweh. We do not care about Yahweh. We want to worship these divinities. And, uh, and what gods are they? They were the gods to whom children were sacrificed, the Bible says. Moloch. Children were sacrificed to Moloch in the traditions of the tribe of Dan. We know that satanic-like rites were conducted. The scripture says it very clearly. Then until Bergoglio came on the scene, idolatry was considered a sin that cries out for vengeance in the presence of God. Pa Pachamam was introduced into the Vatican. Look, look what is said about the tribe of Dan in 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 28. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, 
It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which bought the out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the whole went, for the whole people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. Sorry, I do not know. Why are, why are you going all this way to this Madonna? Since we are so close to May 13th, to this Mary who threatens punishments. I prefer the Mary of the Gospels, so says Bergoglio. Come and worship Pachamama. This is unbelievable. The, civil, the actualization of Scripture. It is the Word of God. And I'm not making anything up. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 28 to 30. Behold, O Israel, your God, who brought us out of the land of Egypt, and the king set one idol in Bethel, the other in Dan. This fact led to sin, for the people went as far as the Dan had prostrated themselves before, before the Pachamama. It does not say Pachamama. I, I said it to you to show this incredible, absolute actualization. In this sense, I ask myself, who Bergoglio really is? And I say something this, uh, this evening that I've never said, but it's time to put your cards on the table. Where does Bergoglio really come from? because it is evident that he is fully implementing the project of these families, of these satanic-like oligarchies that come from the lineage of Dan and from the lineage that is copulated through men with demon angels. But Goyo is implementing this agenda, this plan. He has placed Pachibam in the Vatican and he is preparing the way for the Antichrist. So one wonders exactly where does he come from. It would be interesting to know. It would be interesting to know uh, there's another text in the Bible that speaks of idolatry of the tribe of Dan. Therefore, mind you, uh, let us say inversely proportional to the promotion of a tribe, like the one uh, from which the Antichrist comes, corresponds to the, to the idolatrous, uh, idolatrous extension. Look what happened with the Pachamama. People did not rebel apart from people like us. Most people accepted it. Did they not become a sort of tribe of Dan? For the Antichrist to come, there must be a predisposition to welcome him. Who rebelled against Pachamama? It is an idolatrous act. It is not that there is something to discuss. Who rebelled? Now in Jeremiah we find in chapter 8 verse 16 this text. From Dan you hear, you can hear the snorting of his horses at the sound of the neighing of his steeds. The whole earth trembles. Now what does this warlike advance of the tribe of Dan mean? For the fathers of the church and already in the rabbinic tradition it is so it shows the advance of apostasy, the advance of apostasy and idolatry. So one of the signs that will show that we are approaching conception, if not even birth and development of the Antichrist in terms of a single human being, copulated with the participation of Satan, is that in the meantime, this lineage from which the Antichrist comes will spread in the world through the media, economic power structures and political power only to discover that there is some leader in the East who rebels, and for this reason, he starts immediately a smear campaign. It strikes me very much that in these days, there is a smear campaign against a certain patriarch. It is the same thing done a few years ago with Vatileaks and Benedict XVI. It is the family of the Antichrist. It is this lineage. It is this lineage that comes from Genesis 6 and that's prepared in the course of time the coming of the Antichrist who first targeted, targeted Benedict XVI. The accusations that his brother was a pedophile. They turned out to be a fabrication. Pope Benedict's alleged secret bank accounts that turned out to be another falsehood. It was an unsuccessful attempt to defame him and is now being done with another. Benedict XVI's brother in the faith who will not uh, quote openly because otherwise they will block me. Then the neighing of the horses that advances from Dan shows that this now, we can call the family clan of the Antichrist, presents itself by launching the final attack with idolatry and the apostasy of the faith. It seems to me, however, that we have nothing more to say about this. However, there's a final reference to the tribe of Dan as a possible tribe in which uh, this copulation took place, which Genesis, Genesis the sixth speaks of the fallen Elohim. 
with the women of men and Genesis 49 verse 17 is the text in which Jacob who is dying gives the blessing to all his sons and the blessing to Dan as I write in my book on page 146 of the Symphony of the Lamb is an unusual uh, unusual blessing an enigmatic mysterious prophecy as is often the case in the sacred texts the holy text says Dan be a serpent on the road while the others he spoke for example of Judah who is a lion that, that other one is a horse these are prestigious animals here reference is made to the serpent that I remind you recalls and evokes with all evidence you see how everything adds up I would like to write a booklet on this because there's nothing today that says all of this and this catechesis in my opinion is one of the most important that I've done so far over the years but everything has its time and who knows why I'm, I'm speaking already about this I was saying that the serpent evokes the fall of Adam and Eve the serpent says the sacred text was the most cunning of the wild beasts that tempts Eve but in the serpent there is Lucifer therefore if Jacob who is a father says to Dan you shall be like a serpent he shows his connection with evil spirits a link confirmed by the fact that the tribe of Dan was the one in which idolatrous rites were performed with blood that is children were sacrificed to the god Moloch to the god Baal to Astart and all the other deities of the time and human sacrifices were made as all as uh, also happens in the pre-Columbian tribes and cultures in South America but this is in the Holy Land we read in the Psalms and scripture that God is angry about this these acts of human sacrifice then Jacob says to his son let Dan be a serpent on the road a horned viper in the path that bites the horses carts and the rider falls backwards so a power is uh, proleptically attributed to the tribe of Dan which is like that of, a, of Lucifer and which is characterized precisely as we are saying by the fact that we have a possible copulation between the daughters of the tribe of Dan and these Elohim these fallen spirits that through men perhaps through tribal dances that still exist today where one goes into a trance and then ends up having orgies this offspring has been initiated uh, that will ultimately lead to the birth of the Antichrist himself but who is this Antichrist who who this Antichrist is uh, well he's a human being he is one who will present himself as a savior in the manner of Jesus Christ of course there's a little known little known text by Leo the 13th the Pope that saw the church attacked by Satan which reproduces an allocution given at the consistory of June the 30th 1889 the Holy Father used to say this it is a very sad and monstrous thing that from this soul a city it will be Rome he had seen remember the the church being attacked in which God established the see of his vicar let the independence of thought from God be proclaimed and whence the world is accustomed to receive the frank teaching of the gospel and the counsels of health here things are changed by the wickedness of men we contemplate monuments erected with impunity <coughs> to vituperative errors and to heresy itself this is in 1889 and in this city of Rome a monument to an evil and lost man has been erected he refers to Giordano Bruno there in Campo dei Fiori it is no coincidence that that one was the was then made that a procession attended you see that everything adds up Saint Maximilian Maria Colbe where Lucifer was standing and Saint Michael below him and it was written we will arrive in the Vatican the Pope will be one of us 
In 1889, Leo XIII deplored this monument, placed in Campo dei Fiori in honor of Giordano Bruno, which they wanted to rehabilitate. I've read and studied a lot about him. He was an esoteric thinker of satanic origin, who at the point of death refused the sacraments, who died promising revenge in the worst possible way. They make him a hero of freedom of thought. Giordano Bruno has become an icon of thought, not surprisingly of anti-Christian thought. Here the Holy Father Leo XIII says, a monument to an evil man has been erected. It is lost, and this city of Rome, which it was said would always be the glorious and sure see of the Roman Pontiff, is instead willed to become the counterpart of a new impiety, where human reason equal to God has an absurd and vicious worship. Here, here Leo XIII could not have known what Our Lady had said in the meantime at La Salette, namely that Rome would become the seat of the Antichrist. Another thing that I would like to say, which seems very important to me, is that according to some scholars, the fathers of the Church, I'm naming you uh, because otherwise you will not believe me, Saint Jerome, Andrew of Caesarea, Aretas, Bidi the Venerable, Aimone, Rabinus, Strabus, Saint uh, Azolmus, Rupert of Dius, Peter Comestor, Ludolf Cartunian, Saint Antoninus, whose feast is today, John Gerson, etc. The, the Antichrist will be born in the north of Israel. And in the north of Israel, there was a tribe of Dan. It will be the result of an illicit uh, relationship. And he'll be educated in, ex in, in extraordinary evil arts and will know by heart the scriptures. This is a quote from Saint Anselm of Aosta that I take from this booklet that I have always uh, recommended to you from FEDF Publishing House, which is uh, meritorious because it publishes books that are not found easily. <coughs> this is a text entitled The Antichrist by Augustine Lehmann. Is it, uh, is it correct the way I'm saying it in French? Augustine Lehmann is a French priest who died in 1109, who wrote this text. Well, according to Saint Anselm, the Antichrist will know the entirety of sacred scripture by heart and will know the arts uh, directly. That is, he will, uh, he will not have to study. He acquires them by the work of his father, who is Satan. His guardian angel will turn away from him and Satan will come in his place to function as a guardian angel. This is what Saint Antoninus of Florence says, of which today is his feast. Therefore, he will achieve world dominion, world dominion not only by arms, but by his cunning. The demons will give him the power of the banks, as Saint Anselm says. With Saint Anselm, Saint Ephraim, Lactantius, Saint Hippolytus of Rome, they say that he will work with the help of the, of the devil all the miracles of Jesus Christ. He will heal, heal the lame, make the paralytic walk, even raise the dead. There are a whole set of reflections and certainly make us reflect a great deal. There's a couple of other prophecies. Uh, time is running out though. It seemed to me that I was uh, just spelling something out tonight. The incense and other circumstance, in particular Saint Vincent Ferreri, who was not, uh, not by chance called the Angel of the Apocalypse, and who had the opportunity perhaps like few others to deepen the matter of the Antichrist. His texts are, are not well known. I read you one of his homilies on the Antichrist. He will be a real man, St. Vincent Ferrari says, but so proud that he will not only desire to have complete dominion over the whole world, but will even demand to be called God and insist on receiving divine worship. If you read Revelation 13, we are here. Once more, the Antichrist will direct his attacks against simple people who are so pleasing to God because their hearts turn to him in righteousness of intention. He will use magic. I also talked in my book about mind control, that is the system of mind control. I remember I had an interview with uh, Red Ronnie when there were no live broadcasts yet that I was doing. We were talking about uh, frequencies, musical frequencies, and he told me that there's a study in musical and auditory frequencies. So I'm not an expert on this topic. I don't know how to describe it exactly. I say it in my own words. If you reach a certain frequency, this frequency comes to govern the mind. 
And a lot of rock singers, a lot of uh, rock singers know this. They know this. They, the succeeding, the succeedingly high level of, of decibels, for example, in uh, heavy metal music, as the gatherings and rave parties are called, you can exceed certain frequencies because you then obtain control over the mind. The Antichrist will govern these things in the most effective way through mass media. He will govern the minds of the people and the elect. He will not be governed by this mind control. Will suffer because they say no to these people. They'll be the elect will be accused of uh, being crazy. Saint Vincent Ferrari also says the Antichrist will perform other wonders thanks to the power of demons, and these will be true miracles according to the nature of things in themselves, but false according to the definition of a miracle. The followers of the Antichrist will interrogate. Uh, statues that will make, see the Pachamama as it, as it comes back, and they will give answers, but as the statues will. Let us expect everything from this Pachamama idol concerning the ruler who came in the last times, affirming that he is the Savior. Then these idols will speak. The devil will move their lips and produce the words which they will speak when they declare. It is always St. Vincent Ferry who says this, prophecy of the 14th century, that the Antichrist is the true savior of the world. In this way, he will cause the destruction of many souls. This is St. Vincent Ferry. Every few minutes here. We also know St. Brigitte of Sweden, the one in St. Brigitte's prayers. She is a mystic. She had visions. She had private revelations about the Antichrist. And we read in her writings, the mother of the Antichrist will be a cursed woman. And obviously, she herself will probably belong to the secret bloodline. And not only the male, of course, who will give the seed possessed by Satan, but probably also the woman. Imagine what a mission this woman will have. But she is a woman who also belongs to the secret lineage, and she'll be cursed. She will pretend to be informed about spiritual matters, and her father will be a cursed man. You see how this comes full circle. From whose seed the devil will form this person? So tonight, I'm not saying anything subversive or extreme, but everything starts to fall into place, as you can see. The time of this Antichrist, says uh, Saint Brigitte, whom I know well, it will come when iniquity and ungodliness abound beyond all bounds when unrighteousness has filled the measure to overflowing, and wickedness has grown to measurable proportions. He will reign for three years and rule over all the earth. This is a prophecy of Saint Brigitte. To come to our days, among the many possible indications of the prophecies of their interaction that I have tried to offer you this evening, there is one that struck me very much. And that is Our Lady's message to Father Stefano Gobbi. Messages that in my eyes are absolutely reliable. In one of these messages on December 31st, 1992, Our Lady said to Father Stefano Gobbi, The fourth sign, Our Lady is speaking of the Apocalypse. It is the horrible sacrilege committed by the one who opposes the Christ, that is the Antichrist. He will enter the Holy Temple of God and sit on his throne. In this sense, Bergoglio has many antichristic characteristics. I sometimes wonder if it is not. Uh, well, he will enter into the holy temple of God and sit on his throne and be worshipped as God. You remember that uh, Jesus uh, speaks to Maria Valtorta about the shepherd idol, who is idolized by the masses, accepting the Protestant doctrine. This is interesting. Women priests, the abolition of celibacy, intercommunion, the Eucharist with no transubstantiation, which is the real presence of Christ, and therefore of not kneeling to receive the Eucharist. Tell me if this is not an agenda that has been fully implemented with the cowardice of cardinals and bishops. It will be said that the Mass is not a sacrifice, but only a sacred supper, 
that is the remembrance of what Jesus did at his Last Supper. And so the celebration of Holy Mass will be suppressed. Be careful, not with an official proclamation. From now on, there is no more Mass, but transforming it as the Lord's Prayer was tra has been transformed. By now, there is an, uh, an anti-Lord's Prayer. That is not what Jesus taught. In this abolition of the daily sacrifice, herein begins the horrible sacrilege committed by the Antichrist, the duration of which, but on this, uh, all the prophecies are unanimous, the duration of which will last three and a half years or 1,290 days. Finally, I would uh, like to quote a couple of statements by the Fathers of the Church that the Antichrist will come shortly before the end of the world. And I quote from St. Augustine, the City of God, which states, Before God's last judgment has in been introduced, this is St. Augustine, therefore, summa autoritatis, if the reign of the Holy Ones has been introduced, the reign of the Antichrist will attack the Church fiercely, even only for a short time. This should console us. Therefore, he denies or, or, or doubts that the Last Judgment will take place as foretold in the above mentioned books of the Bible, except he who, for I know not uh, what incredible ill will or ignorance, does not believe in them. We have learned that in, the, in um, that judgment and around the judgment, these events will take place, the coming of Elijah, of Thisbe. This is something that I've dealt with in my book. I also cite a source. Who I, can, who I would imagine is quite credible, that is Padre Pio, who believed in the return of Elijah, in the flesh. The faith of the Jews, uh, we know that uh, the Jews will convert en masse. The persecution of the Antichrist, the judgment of Christ, the resurrection of the dead. Here, St. Augustine puts everything in sequence. The uh, discrimination of good and bad, the cataclysm of the world and its rebirth. Let me conclude. First of all, we've seen that it is possible that the text of Genesis chapter 6, which speaks of a copulation of the Elohim with the women of men, refers to the beginning of a possible satanic lineage, which is then confirmed by the fact that in Revelation 7, the tribe of Dan, that is not mentioned, later just uh, considered by the fathers of the church to be the tribe of the Antichrist. It is possible that out of this lineage that has global financial power in its hands, the satanic oligarchy of Jewish origin, the Antichrist will emerge. The prophecies I was telling you confirm this. I've read several of them. This empire will last three and a half years. An absolutely clear agenda will be applied where Jesus Christ is missing. This will be replaced by a syncretistic type agenda. All the religions are the same. Environmentalism and ecological concerns will predominate. The ecos will become the ethos. That is, it means you protect the environment. What does it matter if you are an adulterer, if you are carnal, if you live in the sin of the flesh? What is important, however, is that you contribute to the protection of creation. Ecos replaces the ethos. This is the agenda, and uh, he referred uh, to that. Uh, stop me, because otherwise I could go on for hours, but these are the issues that concern us all. I'm paying with my own blood. I've not spilled actual blood, but it is as if it has happened. So every right to be heard. I have every right to, to be heard by all. I was saying that in uh, Solovia's text, The Antichrist, he talks about an interreligious summit where the Antichrist presents himself as the savior of humanity, the master of the world. You remember Benson's other great English text, the master of the world? So this Antichrist will apply, if he's not already doing so, an anti-Christian agenda, where a pantheon of religions and the new world order will replace the primacy and salvific uniqueness of Jesus Christ. How will it end? In the end, the time available to the Antichrist is shorter than we imagine. All the fathers, as you have uh, heard the spiritual masters, the theologians, say of a three and a half year period, that even if not in a literal application, there's still a symbolic application that makes us think of a brief time frame. It will end up that man proposes and God disposes, and that God has given us as salvation. Someone wrote at the beginning, I'm terrified, but we have the Blessed Virgin Mary, who conducts a counterplan. It is the clash in Revelation 12 between the woman clothed with the sun and the red dragon. That is, uh, just as there is a carnal lineage of the Antichrist, there is a spiritual lineage of Mary, which is that of the apostles of the end times. And I believe that today, more than ever, we are in the presence of something never seen before. Everything was already being planned, starting from the West, 
uh, and spreading to the entire planet. This new world order, everything was now clear. It was necessary for the heads of government of the whole world to sign an agreement in which gay pride and LGBT demonstrations would, allow, would be allowed and the governments would make themselves available for their application to the application of the uh, Kalergi plan or the Kissinger plan or the Soros plan, just to name a few. Let's say uh, towards the decimation of humanity and ever tighter control of individual rights and so on. That we are already seeing an unexpected event that there was one person who opposed it. Now the work of uh, de delegitimizing of that individual, we see it repeated on TV to the point of vomiting. We see it repeatedly. And people fall for it. The masses believe this narrative. In fact, it could be that this guy who stood up and said, uh, I'm not going to war. And in fact, he did it, as reported by his, uh, his alliance friend his ally, the Patriarch, who is fighting against the New World Order. And it strikes uh, me to the point of irony, to the point of getting a nice haha, a good Bergoglian laugh that tells his friend, the Patriarch, to remain a Patriarch and to not get involved in politics. It is the pot that calls the kettle black, but truly he who belongs to Satan is a hypocrite and a liar. That is, Bergoglio recommends to the Patriarch not to be interested in politics, not to get involved. Bergoglio, who said that uh, Emma Bonino is a great woman. This is Bergoglio. Understood? This man of the left who said that Biden is correct in allowing abortion right up to the moment of birth. Bergoglio, who is a politician, says to his friend the Patriarch, be a Patriarch. Don't be involved in politics. All this is a foretaste of the clash between the descendants of Mary and the incredible descendants of the Antichrist, who, as I told you this evening, have very deep biblical roots. I bless you all with my heart and forward with Mary. Praise be Jesus Christ and forward with Mary.